Hi everyone, welcome back to another session of Azure DevOps training. In the previous session, we saw how to create a free Azure DevOps account. And in this session, we are going to see how to create a organization in Azure DevOps, all right? But before we go ahead and start creating an organization, let's just first understand what is the default structure that Azure DevOps follows, okay? So here I have not listed down everything, every uh, aspect of the Azure DevOps, but these are the few like, you know, starting basic aspects. So basically here, if you see, you need to create an organization and then you will be able to create projects under that organization. And once you have projects, you can create teams. So basically in short, you cannot create a project until and unless you create an organization. Okay. So you will create one organization under that organization. You can create multiple projects and for each projects, you can create multiple teams. Okay. So this is the default structure and it is a strict structure. You have to follow it this way. Okay. So either you can use the default organization that Azure DevOps actually creates for you, or you can create your own organization and then you can move ahead to create projects and then teams. All right. So let's just go ahead and start creating an organization. So I have logged into my Azure DevOps. Okay. If you have already created the account, please log into that. So once you log into your Azure, Azure DevOps account, you will see uh, one organization by default. So whatever email ID you would have used in order to create the Azure DevOps account, this default organization is actually picking up the name from that particular email ID. Okay. So this is what it is showing me. And this option to create a project, it is showing me because I already have a default organization over here. Right. So it is basically telling me that you have an organization. Now you can go ahead and create a project. Okay. But this session is dedicated to creating a new organization. So I'm not going ahead and creating a new project here. So I would rather go and create a new organization. All right. Click on new organization. Click on continue here. You can give whatever name you want for your organization. So demo sample org, anything, whatever you want here, you can select the region, whatever you want. And you need to be like, you know, careful when you're selecting the region because you will not be able to change it afterwards. All right. So that's the. I mean, for, for me, it is by default picking up the region. Okay. Uh, so R W X M. All right. Let me just give it some name. Okay. And then click on continue. All right. So now you can see that it created an organization for me, right? So when you have multiple organization, if you select like, you know, any of the organization, let's say if I select this one, you can see that URL got changed, right? dev.azure.com uh, slash the travel ODC, right? But if I want to select some other organization, I can select the other organization and you will see the URL will change as per the organization that you select. Okay. And whatever you select will be actually like, you know, uh, I mean, you can see that it is selected, right? It, it is highlighted with the color, right? And if you want to change anything, or if you want to see the configuration for this particular organization, you have this option on the left side uh, corner, which is organization settings. So I will click on this one and I'll show you what in all options does it give. Okay. So you can see on the left side, we have multiple panels. We have general, we have security tab, we have boards and we also have pipelines. Okay. So although we have not set up a lot of things over here, but let's just go to each and every uh, option one by one and understand that what are the flexibilities that it gives to you. Okay. So if you are actually on overview, you can change the name of the organization. You can create a, pri a privacy URL. If you want, you can provide any description for the organization, whatever you want. You can change the time zone, uh, sorry, time zone. And here you can see the region, right? It is not allowing us to change the region. This is what I was telling you about. All right. And if you want to change the owner of the organization, if let's say you are leaving the project and if you want to make somebody else, the owner of the organization, then you can do that as well. Okay. And of course, like, you know, you will be able to delete the organization as well. All right. So that these are the options that are available under overview and let's just go ahead to projects. So here, as I have not created any project yet, that is why it is showing me blank, but let me just quickly create a project. Although I'm not going to explain everything to you, but let me just create a sample project here and you can either keep it as private or you can keep it as public. Okay. It is not giving me the option for public, but we will check that out later on. Okay. But you can create a project and the moment you create it, it will start showing me that project listed over here. Okay. You can see that project is listed. So now this particular organization, the one I have created now, this organization has one project and I can create multiple projects. Okay. That is what I told you guys here, right? That under one organization, you will be able to create multiple projects. All right. 
so this will this particular uh, tab is going to show you all the like you know available projects that are created all right so now let's just go to the next one which is users okay here so you can see that i have already been added here but if i want i mean so all the user that you will be adding in your project okay because um sorry in the organization let's say if you have a team of 20 people right then you would have to give access to 20 people because they would want to actually access the azure devops to check out all the requirements or like you know whatever is going on in the project right so basically you would need to add your team members in the organization right and this is the place from where you can do this so here you can like you know click on add users just you need to know the email id you can enter the email id and add extra users whoever you want to add all right and then the next one we have billing tab so if you guys remember i told you that it is only free for five users and you can see here right the basic version of azure devops will give uh, the flexibility to be able to use five users basically five users can be added into this particular azure devops account okay so let's say if you have a team of just five people you don't need to actually buy any extra like you know you you don't need to pay extra you can just use the free version of azure devops all right so this was about billing and if you go to global notifications So this tab is basically for, so whatever activities that you will be doing in Azure DevOps, this is for, do you want to notify users? Let's say I have added 10 members, okay? And out of 10 members, if I want to, let's say, uh, out of 10 members, like, you know, if, if, when people are actually committing and pushing their code, and let's say when the build gets completed, do I want to notify the user that like, you know, whatever code you had committed and pushed, the build is completed, right? So if I want to, this is by default enabled, but if I want to disable it, it will get disabled and the user will not be notified. By notification, I mean, an email will be sent out to the users because when you are adding the users, you will be providing the email ID, right? So to that email ID, a notification will, will be sent if these are on, okay? So for example, for now, if any build gets completed, whatever users I have added, they will get a notification and email notification saying that the build is completed. All right. And the same thing goes with like, you know, all of these activities, pull requests. Okay. Reviewers are added or removed. So let's say if somebody is working on a piece of requirement, they have committed and pushed the code and they have added somebody to review the code. So whoever they have added to review the code, they will get an email notification saying that they have been added as a reviewer to a particular requirement. All right. So these things are for the, for notifying the users. Okay for all these activities and of course this is extension management let's say if you are using any extension services which are available in azure devops then that can be like you know uh, handled from here as well okay and this is for pipeline this is for release management so don't worry about these things you will like you know while because if even if i explain each and everything to you right now you will not be able to understand everything because of course we have not discussed any of these topics right so just keep in mind that if you have to alter any kind of email notifications for any activities that are done in azure devops you can handle from global notifications all right then let's just go to usage from usage you can actually see that who has been like you know working on what here okay so right now i just have like I only I am the only user of this particular Azure DevOps account, right? So that is why you are seeing only me here. Otherwise, like you know, if there are multiple users who has been added, so whoever will be like you know accessing Azure DevOps or whatever activities they would be doing, everything is going to be logged over here. Okay, so that is what we have in usage. Then when we go to extensions here, like you know all the like you know whatever services that Azure DevOps has, if you have added any of the extensions, then that will be showed here. Okay, whatever you will install in your azure devops account any of the azure devops services that will be displayed over here all right and let's say if you are um, if you want to connect your azure devops to any of the active directories then that also you can do from here all right and then under security we have some like you know policies um and these things like you know uh, we can skip for now i think this was enough information about an organization and then we have something called permissions if you want to create new group because we are not discussing group right now so i'm just going to skip this for now okay and then again like you know these things boats and pipelines we would be discussing these things so don't worry about it when we actually discuss these things then we will also discuss about the security and all the settings that you can do for like you know boards and pipelines so don't worry about this 
only keep in mind the general uh, settings for the organization all right so this was all about organization creating an organization in azure devops in the next video we are going to see how to create a project and all the details that will be available under a project in azure devops all right so that's it for now thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one